Now, I sat down today to record a reaction to a completely different cat-themed reality television show. But while looking for it, I stumbled across this. This show is called Cat Hunters. And from that title, I was genuinely concerned what the hell this show could possibly be about. From the title alone, I thought this was a game show about people going around shooting cats. Thankfully, not what the show's about. Cat Hunters is a show about a crack team of researchers and investigators who are on the prowl looking for evidence of big cats. And I'm not talking about a Maine Coon, I'm talking about a Jaguar. Now, I love animals getting up to mischief in places that they shouldn't be. Not in a cane toad or, or rabbit kind of way, more of like a Madagascar or a polar bear and lost kind of way. Off the top of my head, the most interesting real life case of this happened in the Northern Territory of Australia. This guy was out hunting feral pigs when he shot and killed a pig me hippo. Now, it was an accident. Again, he thought it was a pig. This animal had been living in the Australian wilds for about six years. It was from a private zoo that went out of business. And I guess they just released the animals into the wild. So it survived in the Australian wilderness for six years before it died. I I'm sorry, this was sad. If you know any cases of this kind of thing in your area, please let me know. I'm really interested in the subject. Maybe something we'll cover more on the channel. That's enough about what's happening in Australia. Let's jump over to the country that arrested my ancestors. Britain, famed for its royal family, houses of parliament, fish and chips and bad weather. Dewing, bad teeth, hot cup of tea, the queen, Brexit, the Big Ben. But do you know what's bigger than the Big Ben? Big cats. This voiceover really makes me think this is marketed towards a international audience rather than a domestic one. Like if I was watching an Australian show and the narrator just had this thick bogan accent, I would be turning it off. Leopards, humours, they're a remnant legacy of the old exotic pet trade of the British Empire and a team of four intrepid investigators are gonna find these beasts. Alright, so off the bat, we're meeting our crack team. We've got John, the old timer. He spent 35 years researching the subject. He's researched big cats in the UK for 35 years and he's never caught one. I mean, I'm assuming he's never caught one. That that feels like something they'd put in the intro. Feels like already we can say that there's no big cats in the UK. But I don't want to get into this too skeptical, all right? I'm going in with a fresh, a fresh, um, uh, malleable mind. Rhoda, the tracker. She was raised on the plains of Africa and live with the Sam Bushman. From this image, I think we can safely say that she wasn't fully enveloped in the culture, but I don't want to make assumptions. We're just going to take the narrator's word for it. Jay, the Maverick. He's an experienced mountaineer. If it needs to be climbed, he's your man. I think they could have picked a bigger rock for him to climb in the intro, but, you know, that's cool. Carl, the crypto guy. Huh? What? Why the hell do they need a crypto guy? You're gonna see if these big cats have digital wallets. He's led expeditions all over the world, but don't show him a photo unless it's proper pucker. They say he's led expeditions all over the world, but they show a picture of him with a spider at the zoo and with the tiniest crab claw on the tip of his finger. I have no idea what crypto guy is bringing to the table on this team. I'm keen to find out though. Feels like such a weird thing to put for his introduction. Crypto guy. Hey, I was just editing this and I've just realized that when they said crypto, they didn't mean cryptocurrency, they meant cryptozoology. I feel like a big dummy. For the rest of the video, I make fun of him thinking that they meant cryptocurrency, but I'm not gonna edit it out now. Uh, uh, go, uh, yeah, I hope you like the video. Scout, the rookie. He's only young, but there's no scent that nose can't track. And they've got Scout, who is said to be a sniffer dog, but he looks a little wild on the leash, if you ask me. They are the cat hunters. I'm not going to judge these people off the introductions. I think they're probably all very good and proficient in their field. The introduction, just a little bit weird. So they start talking about their experiences. John obviously says over his 35 years, he's found tons of evidence. I've seen them many times, and I've also found lots of their field evidence in the form of scats, footprints, deer kills. Hair, the lot. And then they try and do this classic Mulder and Scully kind of dynamic where they've got, you know, a believer and a cynic. The cynic in the form of the crypto guy. Well, I've not seen one myself in Britain anyway. I expect, though, that their numbers are going to be a lot lower than most researchers suggest. But in saying this, the crypto guy, he does still believe there's big cats in Britain. He's just a little more skeptical on the evidence, allegedly. There definitely are big cats in this country. There is evidence for them. But a lot of the time, these photographs, they're, they're just laughable. So, not a huge cynic. Jay says he's seen a big cat in the wild, and he says specifically that it was a melanistic leopard, otherwise known as a black panther. So it was about three years back, just driving down the road with Mrs and the kids in the car. 
looked across the valley and saw this melanistic leopard coming down the slope. Now, my problem with big cat sightings is that it is always a panther. Now, even in its native habitat, it is rare. Just giving it a quick Google search then, only 11% of leopards and jaguars have this kind of specific coloration. So even in the exotic pet trade, it's like equally as hard to come by. So why is it that sightings of big cats are always panthers and never one of the more prominent species like a lion or a tiger or a cheetah or a non-melanistic leopard? There is no house cat that looks like any of these, but a large population of domestic cats are entirely black. So when you look at one from a distance or you see like a large one in a bush, it would be so easy to make the mistake. Even just searching big cat sighting on Google Images, so many of these are just so obviously black cats. In saying this, there's gotta be some out there somewhere. I don't want you to think that I'm a skeptic, I'm just skeptical. Now this is where Rhoda brings up the Beast of Exmoor. The cat we always heard about was the Beast of Exmoor. This is probably one of the more famous big cat conspiracies in the entire world. She starts showing the team some news clips from the 80s. It goes for a bit, so I'm gonna sum it down real quick. Essentially like a hundred sheep were killed by some kind of mysterious beast back in the 80s. It was like a full police and military military presence out trying to find this thing. And it talks about a specific farmer who was impacted by this quite heavily called Eric. So the team decides that they're going to find this beast. So they split up into two teams and follow different leads. While they do this, I'm going to do some quick investigating myself. It's day one and the team... Yeah, it's dead. It, it, it probably died in the 90s. The team split into two units. Jay and Carl have set up a meeting at Exmoor Zoo with Derek the park's carnivore keeper. Okay, so for some reason, half the group has gone to the zoo to learn more about big cats, I guess. Even though these guys are meant to be the experts. The zoo doesn't offer much. They just say that people still ask about the beast regularly. Derek says there are still reports being made to the zoo to this day. Now this obviously lends an extra element of credibility to the phenomenon as a whole. I'm glad this guy tells us that this adds credibility to them because I would not have picked up on that. I love a zoo trip though, so no complaints here. Meanwhile, Rhoda decides that they need an aerial view of the creature's potential habitat. We are here at Somerset Microlites, which is super exciting. I want to get up in the sky and see if Exmoor is a decent habitat for cats or not. Uh, great day for spotting cats, I reckon. I kind of just feel like she wanted to fly around in a plane a little bit. They asked John if he wants to come and he says, I'm not going a funny little nap machine like that. I think I'll leave that to somebody else. Turns out the offer was completely hollow anyway because there's only two seats. Guys, kill the cat. I'm looking. <laughs> How crazy would it be if they just saw a big cat right now? Like, the whole time, all they needed to do was fly a plane over it. So, so far, all they've done is had a day at the zoo and had a trip in a plane. It sounds like these guys were trying to finance the best day ever. Okay, so finally, the real investigation begins as Jay and Carl interview the guy who had his livestock killed back in the 80s. Could you tell us a little bit more about what happened here back in 1983? Initially, it started off with baby lambs, and then it went through to full-grown use. Where do you think this animal came from? There was a guy who was sort of semi-local, would travel up our road with two big cats sort of in the back of his truck. Wait, so this guy knows a guy who would drive big cats down his road? He used to go up on the nearest moorland and let him go and exercise them. Just off the lead, just yeah. roaming. Wow. Yeah. And he would let them off leash and exercise them. You can't even have most cats off leash without them running away. I think we've solved the case, boys. Wow, this guy had a black leopard and a puma. What a revelation, a new twist on the phenomenon after four decades. He kept them there, allegedly, as guards for the shop. Oh. And things got a bit hot for him. Consequently, the two big cats vanished as well. It was that guy. It was that guy. He, he was his freaking cat. We worked it out. We did it. Their rifle instructor had a pop shot. He, he pulled the trigger. I never had no more trouble thereafter. Oh, and they shot it. They shot it as well. There's like 30 minutes left of the episode and we know what happens. That's good enough for me. But there's a new sighting apparently, so John and Rhoda go investigate. An animal creeping along a hedgerow at five o'clock in the morning. That can only be a panther. No, John, that could be literally anything. From that description, it could be a badger for all we know. Now we're getting a dramatic retelling of the sighting. I noticed that over in the corner here, there was a black shadow. It bolted from there all the way down and it went over the fence and disappeared into the bushes. Why is it that big cats never attack people and they just exclusively run away? Maybe big cats are skittish, I don't know. Seems a bit weird for a predator. This guy had a career in the police 
and the military. He is so credible. I really believe him. All right, just because he's ex-police and ex-military does not make him reliable. Not calling anyone a liar here, but dude can still missee something. Sorry, I've got to bring it in. I've got to bring it in. I'm being a little too skeptical here. I'm trying to come in with an open mind. We are planning to sit out all night and look for cats wow. anywhere in this area that you think would be a really good place to try. Valley of the Rocks, I think it is. All right, how do these two random people know where the cat lives? These guys should be the cat hunters. Maybe the real cat hunters are the friends we made along the way. Bring them along! 20 miles north of Von and Dave's property. It's an open valley with vantage points. And it's home to an herd of wild goats. Yeah, just the place an ambush predator from the Amazon would like to live. An open field. Jay and Crypto King head out into the wilderness. And it's time for Jay to show off his skills. Jay, my friend, you have balls of steel. Okay, so he's gone abseiling. Wish me luck. Okay, PPE. This is actually a pretty big cliff. This is exciting. Is he falling? Can you get a bit closer? No? No? Okay. Hi, Carl. Jay has just jumped off a cliff. He isn't back yet, and I'm starting to get worried. Oh, don't worry about that. He does it all the time. I love that a response to that Jay's just off a cliff is just, <laughs> yeah. Out of context, getting that information would be extremely dark. Oh, right, what's this here? It's quite a hairy scat sort of marking place. Oh, Jay, no, don't do that. Don't do that, man. Definitely doesn't smell like dog. It doesn't smell like dog? Do you do this often, man? Jay? No, dude, you don't tell me you know what that smells like, man. Interesting. I love that it's perfectly placed on this bright green mound of moss. Just so it's easier for us, the audience, to see it. Now, to me, this doesn't look like cat shit. But I still think this is a sign of a big cat sighting. Man just found a hairball. There's no, like, shit mixed in with it. It's just hair. Still alive, then? Just about. That was, like, the hairiest abseil I've ever done. But... Look what I found, world. Hairiest abseil he's ever done. Was that a pun? He didn't nail it. Was that meant to be a pun? I'm gonna be sick if that was meant to be a pun. His delivery was off, man. You gotta make it obvious. What he should do, this is what I would've done. I would've said, that was the hairiest abseil I've ever done. And I lift up the hair, as I say. That's the hairiest abseil I've ever done. That's what I would've done. And then Crypto Guy would be like, what? Hair. Anyway, all right, let's keep watching. Okay, so while that hairball was obviously placed on that mound of moss, somehow that evidence is more convincing than the next evidence they show. So this is the gate that Von was talking about with the scratch marks. That okay. Cover. Look. Oh, what? oh look. crikey. There's always oh, loads. Look, there's loads here. Look all there. These scratch marks are the least convincing evidence so far. One, you think a big cat would clear that fence in one leap. Two, those are the lightest scratch marks I've ever seen. My dog has left deeper scratch marks on my fence. John, this is where David said that he saw the cat come down and into the garden. Look, all through here. One, two, three, four. Deep, deep marks here. Look at those. John, you're taking the piss, surely. Surely. Yeah, a big cat left those tiny scratches on that tin roof. I reached the top. Well, I thought it was the top, but it's not. It's a false summit. I've got to get up on top of that boulder up on the top up there now. Wait, is that the same rock from the introduction? Please, let this man climb something bigger. Let him show off his skills. Now, from his vantage position, he has found a cave for the team to explore. For some reason, they head towards the cave at night. Yeah, it's definitely goat territory, isn't it? You need to be a goat to climb up here. Which I think, in my opinion, would be the worst time to go into big cat territory. Cave, look at that. That's amazing. So we've got this place. This I'll is hold so scout cool. back if you want to go and have a look. Yeah. Oh man, they're gonna enter the den of the beast. There's loads of bones in here. Oh wow. What a small, neat pile of bones. That's, that's um... Is that freaking Velociraptor claw? Okay, how the hell am I meant to believe this is real when they put a freaking Velociraptor claw in there? What is that thing, man? Megalodon tooth right there. Horn, isn't it? Yeah. Hey, f uh, false alarm, it was a baby goat horn. I am dumb. Now, I have found animal bones in caves before, similar to this, but I have never seen them so neatly placed and so clean. But surely if this was real, you would get the hell out of this area as fast as possible. You're in the feeding grounds at dinner time. All those bones in there and a piece of goat horn. What does that tell you? Oh, that poor dog is shivering, dude. Take Scout home, man. I know. 
These bones aren't for you, bud. That poor little guy, he didn't sign up for this. There must be over 20 goats up there. Ow! 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 What's going on here, John? Are you, are you okay, man? They're looking. They've heard it before. John, of course they're looking at you. You were yelling at them. You're making a sound and an animal is responding. Did you think the goats would just ignore you? They would have no idea what you're doing, man. So it's day two now and the group is planning what they're going to get up to today. John and I went to see Bon and David, who were amazing, incredible witnesses. They told us about another sighting just 10 miles away from them really recently. She's really trying to hammer home how credible these witnesses are, which for me is having the opposite effect. Team splits up again and Jay and Crypto go talk to another credible witness. Turns out they've seen a big cat as well what a surprise the fact that the sighting took place during twilight in the early hours of the morning lends a little extra credibility to it that's when you would expect to see a cat like this okay so but in the twilight hours it's also like hard to see i don't think that's a point in your direction here and uh, how big do you think it was well from the bedroom window we looked out on it, it must have been about four foot long that's what i cut them under the yard wait they think four four foot long and a couple hundred yards away a panther's meant to be like two meters long four foot Again, is closer to a house cat. I'm like six foot seven, so like, uh, four foot comes up to my hips. Anyway, they just gloss over the fact that this thing is tiny and the group is ecstatic. I'm not gonna lie, I've mostly been watching Scout this whole scene. He said the wound on it was that big, and I go, God, I went. I have not been paying attention. This woman also knows someone whose horse got attacked by a big cat, allegedly. Why the hell aren't they talking to that person? They've had direct contact with a big cat. Talk, talk to them. Now, in the cat lab, they're investigating the scat sample, looking at hairs under a microscope. Now, initially, I thought all this was so dumb. But John has thrown out just a whole bunch of science words, and now I can't help but believe every word that he says. Light emits through them, and you can see the medulla. That's the inner cellular structure within the hair follicle and it could be cat it may be something else there are other hairs definitely badger in this one scene john has completely turned it around for me dude actually knows what he's talking about okay i like john he's fully swayed me i'm fully convinced with john i'm a big cat believer there's got i'll believe in big cats all along the edge and then look up here potentially sort of try what the hell kind of camera work is this on the bones i feel like i'm losing my mind we have a, a horn of, of a of a young goat yeah okay up, up close that looks nothing like a velociraptor claw or whatever the hell i said uh i want to issue a formal apology all right meanwhile crypto guy is playing with a drone <laughs> Yeah, that looks like tree tops to me. They really should have made tech this guy's thing instead of cryptocurrency. I'm still waiting for the crypto to come into play. They're going to find out that this wasn't a cat and it was a dog. And then he's going to start shilling dog coin at us. That's going to be the whole arc for the show. How did they find some of their most solid evidence so far? Hang on a sec, there's something here. That's a large uh, print, isn't oh, it? Oh, no way. Cat prints in the mud. There's a slight problem, though. You're a gem. It's really that, big, look, that it? is so. That is obvious. Us. That is fresh as, isn't it? Look at I don't want to blame anyone here, but camera guy, I can't see any prints at all. Just laid. It actually looks just a few hours old, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Also, must be a pretty light cat because you can see how deep the <laughs> cameraman's footprints have right gone here. Fit. I thought big cats were pretty heavy, but guess not. Also, let's hypothetically say this was real. If these are fresh prints, you are right near a big cat. Get the hell out of there. You guys don't currently look prepared for that situation currently. Get the hell out of there. Team Crypto are doing an overnight stakeout to find the beast. And they end up using a rabbit call to lure in the predator. <coughs> that is one loud rabbit. Did you hear that? Yeah, I did, I see. Animal in distress, wasn't it? Oh no, John and Rhoda didn't get the memo. Apparently they didn't communicate that they would be doing this overnight stakeout. <laughs> when I was looking through my binoculars, I noticed there was a hide built over there. I think it's about time we had a bit of fun. Oh, but John's on to him though. When I heard that Jay had jumped off a cliff, he scared me half to death. I'm going to get my own back now. Rhoda, with all respect, what the hell are you talking about? You were so chill with the fact he jumped off a cliff before. No part of you was stressed about that. I think she's just looking for an excuse to do a little pranking, which I respect. We love pranks here. We love pranks here on the Toddy Boy channel. For some reason, they have a predator call, and this extreme music has been playing the whole time. I have no idea why there's no cuts here. Did you hear that? What was that? What is that? 
Why the hell does John have a Chewbacca mask? Where, why, where, where did this come from? It's getting closer. Right, it's, it's definitely getting closer. They sure taught those guys a lesson. One of these types of shows always have a prank in them. Like every time it's done in such a fake way that everybody knows it wasn't real. We do love to see John channeling his inner cat though. I think we hear a leopard. We about ourselves. And what is it? It's John McGowan. Okay, now it's two weeks later. Not in my life, in their life. Evidence is getting analyzed. The bone doctor talks for ages, but essentially he says that he hasn't finished looking at the bones. Results are inconclusive. The geneticist says that some of the DNA from the hairs was inconclusive. She could identify some of the strands, which belong to a rabbit. You have had one sample that's worked, and that is coming back as a European rabbit. Okay. There could be a predator involved here. It could be something like a fox. I can't say it is a cat, but I can't say that it's not. Okay, so all the evidence they got. The bones, inconclusive. The hair, inconclusive or a rabbit. How the hell are they gonna break this bad news to each other? How did it go with Professor Hemmings? It was brilliant. He actually was really interested in these bones and he said they've got a high probability that they could be eaten by a big cat. I spoke with Professor King. You could only extract DNA from one of those samples, but she did say that the scat could have come from a predator. Oh wow, they, they really spun that. Holy crap. Absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence, so who knows? Is the beast of Exmoor still out there? Potentially. Absence of evidence isn't evidence of absence. What a freaking hula hoop to jump through, man. Typically that's how evidence works. It, it shows you whether or not there is something. They end the episode by showing some old news footage of that guy who had the two big cats who was brought up by the farmer earlier in the episode. In the last 20 months, butcher John May has been the victim of thieves eight times. Now Mr. May has a new security method, a six month old puma called Solomon. I just keep my puma in a place and if people go there where well, they have no business there, then uh, they must obviously suffer the consequences. And they treat it like that's a smoking gun. Uh, they they should have looked at that during this episode. I just went to check out the next episode to see if they kind of delve into that any further. But it turns out there is no next episode. That's it, baby. Honestly, I'm really disappointed there's no second episode. I, uh, I really did genuinely enjoy watching this. If you made it this far in the video, please hit like. I would really genuinely appreciate it. And as always, let me know in the comments if there's any topics you'd like me to cover on the channel, whether it's a movie or a show or a TikTok or whatever. Now, after watching this show, I think I can definitely say with absolute certainty that there's no big cats in my area. I would like there to be. I think that would be cool, but there's not. Because if there was one, I'd definitely know about it now. Big, dumb, stupid cat. Can't hide from me, man. Oh my god. It's right behind me, isn't it?